Friday afternoon. Uh, okay, so uh, I've got some things that uh, I had prepared, and then as we've gone through the day, uh, so many of it's already been covered. So uh, this is a kind of curious uh, part of the day to sort of uh, try attempt to draw things, some strands together. Anyway, um, I'm. I, I, I'm going to cover, uh, set a wee bit of context, and then just talk about three kind of areas where things are happening. Um, but uh, first, um, I, I need to say something very quickly about this kind of stuff. So there is a planning bill. Um, uh, it emerged from um, a period of consultation, an initial independent panel report. So this goes back to 2015, which seems remarkable now, uh, all this period of time. Um, and uh, it uh, offered up some recommendations. But I think the most remarkable things that I've taken from this uh, are these statements. Planning system's not broken. There's a collective will to improve the system. There's a huge potential in planning. Uh, and there's a commitment to change practice and culture. And it's really those things that I want to hold on to as we go through this. So, um, because I think that a big driver for the planning reform is, is to to think about the process and the procedure and actually move to practice, so delivering good outcomes on the ground. Um, so following the panel, there was a period of consultation and then it led to um, uh, places people in planning. Uh, so that was in the middle of last year and that has now um, moved to become a planning bill. Um, uh, is anybody interested in any of this kind of stuff? <laughs> <laughs> yes! <laughs> Audience, but is that, or can you just not hear me? <laughs> <laughs> you are interested. Okay, very good. Right, well, um, so it was introduced in December of last year. Um, so we've kind of gone through uh, stage one, which was the committee reporting, um, and uh, we're now at stage two. And, and this is, um, all joking aside, this is quite interesting stuff because uh, the committee and the discussions around this have been fascinating for various reasons. It's a minority government, there's political football being played. Um, the original purpose of the planning bill, uh, which was to simplify and free up opportunities to make great things happen, uh, is actually um, being, uh, other people are seeing opportunities for hoops. Uh, so the, you know, we, we, we're getting um, well-intentioned uh, additions, but instead of maybe uh, simplifying process, we're maybe starting to add to, to process. So um, those discussions are still underway. Uh, stage two of the committee is uh, being discussed in Parliament on a, on a Wednesday morning. Um, and then we'll move to stage three. And I think that it's important for me to mention that because um, because of the passage uh, of parliamentary processes and procedures, um, that that timescale has slipped. Now, there's still an opportunity, if anybody out there is interested, to make your comments and views known uh, in order to inform stage three, okay? Now, that's not done through uh, the Scottish Government. You'd have to make contact with the Parliament uh, and speak to MSPs. But if you feel strongly about certain aspects, then there's still an opportunity to have your views represented. And the stage three, this is, there's a curious anomaly, I'm probably taking up too much time about this, but I think it's important. Um, normally, stage three would be about kind of joining up all the dots and kind of addressing all the inconsistencies. On this occasion, stage three is going to be much more meaningful because it's going to be coming back to grips to many of the starting issues about why are we having a planning bill. Yeah. So, um, if anybody has an interest, there's still an opportunity to shape discussions around this. And I realise that's kind of direct to that planning, the strict planning codes. But actually, it's relevant to community planning interests as well. So it's actually relevant to the whole of civic society. So um, I thought, go, yeah, because I thought it was chance. interesting that document that you just had up there, Eric. Actually, and it talks about um, the need to prepare guidance for spatial planning on this, but also for community planning on this. So uh, I think it is of interest to everybody to be having a look at, at just how this is progressing and what happens and what comes through in it. Absolutely. So. <laughs> So uh, five, point, five, five parts of the bill. Uh, part one is development planning, and um, this covers the points that you were um, identifying. Um, I'm not going to go into this in detail. I know there are people in the room that have uh, particular interests in various aspects about this. Um, suffice to say that um, uh, enhanced status for the national planning framework and Scottish planning policy, that means, in effect, 
that at a planning level, we can take out all the policy stuff. So all the words that Neil was talking about that can be put to the back of the document, actually the plan can be a plan, and the words, the policies, can be encapsulated in something else. So the plan starts to change, which is, uh, I want to come back to later on. Um, and then, Dorothy, you'll have a, a, an interest in, sure, in uh, strategic planning um, and, and, uh, and suggested changes that, that sit around that. But the thing that's uh, most relevant, I'm sure, to this audience uh, is in relation to the development plans, local development plans. And then um, Jill's made reference to the 10 year time scale, so two years, two years to do, eight years to make happen. Uh, incredibly important, incredibly important, because it starts to ask questions about the skills and the competencies and how we actually do these things. Um, statutory link with community planning, which is the whole purpose of today, uh, and linking with the LOIPs. And taking out a way, uh, 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 avoiding a duplication of visioning. So the plan has a vision, community plan has a vision. Actually, now we've got one integrated vision, which again uh, starts to ask questions. It starts to ask questions about how we operate, how we integrate. And it starts to ask questions about what is a plan. Um, introduction of the gate check. That's something that's slipped through, but it's incredibly important because it's about the evidence. It's about stating up front what you're trying to do. Where's the evidence? Where's the data? We've already spoken about that in this morning, uh, earlier presentations. Um, and, I'll, and I'll touch again on, uh, in a minute. Um, removal of supplementary guidance and the delivery programs. These are really, really important to the common agenda that we're all sitting here discussing t today. And um, uh, local place plans. Uh, there's so much that could be said about this, but I don't want to kind of dwell on this. Um, but if people have got uh, any questions and you want to come and speak to me afterwards, I'm very happy to chat to you afterward. Um, but the important thing about this is that this is legislation, it's primary legislation, we'll then move into secondary legislation, there'll be regulations, there'll be guidance. Is that going to make a better planning system? Uh, do we have to put all our trust and faith in legislation to make change on the ground? Because the reality is, it's not just about legislation. And the primary driver, the whole starting point for the whole planning bill, the review, was about getting more planning. Get planning, doing planning. So minimise the process and procedures and focus on doing what we all signed up to do, which was to work in the long-term public interest and to get better results for our communities on the ground. So um, I want to touch on, on three things. Um, uh, I, I want to mention um, some lead practice work. I want to mention some work that I've been recently involved in. And then I want to kind of end with a kind of a question. So I hope this is OK in terms of timings. Yeah, you know, right? So far? So five far, so good. Five minutes. I'll, I'll kind of keep the blinkers up. <laughs> so I um, uh, just want to mention this, this uh, pilot work, uh, lead practice pilot work. and. Um, uh, there were three, uh, three authorities initially came forward to um, look at how the aims and aspirations that were originally being expressed as part of the bill uh, could, uh, could actually, not even could, is already being put into, into practice um, uh, on the ground at the moment. And um, Amanda and uh, Anthony uh, from Western Barton uh, had a, a great time, uh, I think, uh, so enjoyable, um, looking at how uh, they were working already, and you've already heard this morning about how they were linking um, community and spatial planning. Um, and, uh, I, I, and some of the things, again, uh, uh, not to, just, just to kind of highlight, you know, this idea that we, um, we make better use of existing resources. We don't duplicate consultation. We avoid uh, uh, going out and speaking to communities too many times in too many different ways uh, and uh, we start to join things up. So there's a much more integrated corporate approach to how we think about uh, how we work. And, th and that's incredibly important. We've already heard about the, the pressures on budgets, the, the cutting back of resources. So how do we work smarter in more joined up ways to get better outcomes? And that's one example um, of, of uh, how it's been taken forward to date. So very grateful to uh, Anthony and his team uh, at Western Barnshire to offer themselves up as, as uh, uh, an opportunity to write that as a case study. So these three case studies uh, are all written up, they're available online. Uh, again, I can make that information available to you. Um, so you can see this kind of diagram, evidence, plan, uh, delivery, 
but a big focus on the outcomes because this, this is how we um, attempted to draw out this new planning system. Uh, important uh, focus on evidence, evidence-based, uh, important as we get into the plan, but actually incredibly important as we uh, move through to delivery. So the, the second um, uh, the second example was in Murray Council, and I'm, I'm not going to go into any of the detail here, but it's just to say that uh, Murray Council, um, they looked at uh, the gate, the gate check, so the evidence report, and um, just very, very briefly, uh, they uh, found this gate check, evidence report, incredibly useful. It was their lever to engage with community planning. Up till then, community planning and uh, spatial planning, so that pulls apart and uh, there was a reluctance to engage. But the opportunity for community planning to identify the outcomes that they wanted to achieve, to integrate the time scales about how the policies were being developed, and to think about the delivery, this, the gate check, was the opportunity to pull all of this together. So incredibly important in terms of integrating things. And uh, the last one, Fife Council worked with us um, on the delivery programme. Uh, and that um, was, was absolutely fascinating, seeing how we could move from what is currently perceived as an action plan, which maybe identifies projects uh, or uh, particular aims, but actually it's quite a static uh, tabular data. Uh, uh, thinking about a delivery programme became a completely different exercise entirely. It became a way of thinking about a, a, a budget management mechanism for the business plan for the future of your place. So how do you manage current uh, budget commitments which sit as vertical um, uh, uh, silos? How do you manage them horizontally to be thinking about the place? So in any one place, what is the right combination of investment? So, and when you get your development happening in a place, how is it seen as to be as an investment rather than just a development? So, uh, five, uh, fantastic. And then we had a, a kind of a wrap-up session, and I could say an awful lot about this, and there's a lot there uh, in terms of the, the tabulated information. But I just want to draw out these three themes. Um, there was something that very definitely, uh, and Anthony, I'm sure, will get a, a bit of a nodding head here, but there's something very definitely, yeah, thank you very much, it's good, it's kind of scripted. Um, but something very definitely about uh, delivering outcomes being clear about what you wanted to achieve and working towards delivering outcomes. Something very definitely about corporate working. So joining things up, uh, just as we've heard throughout today, um, but not joining things up because it's a nice to have. You join things up because it's essential. It's essential. Planning doesn't sit in a silo. Community plan doesn't sit over there. Community development doesn't sit over there. Community education doesn't sit over there. You join things up because you have to. You have to. Otherwise, you're not making any impact. Otherwise, we're all just servicing our own little treadmills and processes, and we're not actually getting anywhere. So you have to join these things up. So there has to be much more of a corporate approach to things. Uh, and, and lastly, the focus on delivery. So these three things, outcomes, corporate approaches, and focusing on delivery. And that um, is something that I then want to move on. The second thing, if this is OK, am I doing all right? I've got one minute. You're going to miss out on all the gems. <laughs> Recently, we did some work in Fort William. We were invited to help with uh, uh, an exercise up there. Um, and it was on the back of producing a delivery program. They'd done all the plan stuff. They'd done all the co uh, community planning stuff. They'd identified their outcomes. Um, they'd identified uh, all the policy positions, uh, blah, 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 blah. And um, now we need to do a delivery program. This was amazing. Just amazing, because we uh, worked with the community. Uh, they'd identified 20 projects. And the starting point for this was to say, once you get to the end of your delivery program, what have you delivered? Have you delivered 20 projects, or have you delivered better outcomes? So we uh, had a very intensive one-day event. Um, we uh, went through um, quite a, an intensive uh, process. Um, and as part of that, um, we uh, we got to the end of it, uh, and, and it was a remarkable thing <laughs> for me anyway, at a very personal level, uh, because 
what essentially should have been the drawing together at the end of a process became the start of what was happening. So thinking about the projects, when we started to look at the projects, we got into a discussion about how you joined up the projects, the benefits that might accrue from joining all the projects up. And then we started to realise actually there's some projects that are missing here, so there's some additional projects. And then we started to link all of the projects, you can see up here, we had a discussion about how each and every project started to deliver on the outcomes. So because we're working across planners, uh, community planning partners, uh, uh, local delivery uh, agents, uh, agencies, and the community, the wider community, this was open to the public, it was an open public event, people then started asking questions about what well, actually we need to deliver outcomes. And we developed a spatial strategy, and we've gone on to shape out a template uh, for a delivery program. All of which kind of brings me to my final slide, which is uh, a really interesting point. There's bags of time, bags of time. Hubs are open till midnight, so you know. Um, uh, because this thing about uh, moving from uh, two years preparation, eight years delivery, it asks questions because at the end of this process in Fort William, I, I think it's fair to say there was a common acknowledgement that we, this was the start of planning. We'd reached the starting point for taking forward the planning, the delivery of the planning. And they start to ask questions about the skills and the competencies and, and, uh, and the attitudes about making this happen. So do we have that? Um, so the last slide really is about this thing, the uh, starting point. Planning, drilling, delivering great places. How do we influence good outcomes? And what does a place-based plan start to look and feel like? If we're stripping out the policy, if we're getting much more in, involved in, in delivery, um, and we've done some exercises, and I'd be keen to engage with, uh, with um, whoever wants to uh, engage in this, about what is tomorrow's plan? What does tomorrow's plan? Once we move before beyond the bill, um, and we're into tomorrow's world, what is a plan? And, you, and it's not too hard to envisage on the back of today's event and all the other things that have been happening. Will we continue to have planning and spatial planning and all the other things? Or will there just be a different thing? And I have to tell you, the Fort William event was, the feedback I've had about the Fort William event is that it was successful because we didn't mention the P word. Yeah? That, I think, is telling. Because what happened was that planning, planning was seen as being the agent of delivering outcomes, a corporate approach, and focused on delivery. Thanks very much.